Every developer needs to know how to create a JavaScript search bar because they're used in every single site. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create one as well as some pitfalls you need to watch out for. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this search bar over here that allows you to search through a list of users. And this video is gonna be broken down into three parts. The first is gonna be the HTML, then the CSS, and then finally JavaScript for the searching. And I'm gonna have timestamps down below in the description so you can jump around to the exact section you care about. Now to get started with the HTML, we're just gonna create a simple index HTML, get the boilerplate code inside of here, and all we really need to have is a search bar and then a section for all of our user cards at the bottom. So we're gonna have a section called search wrapper, which is gonna contain our search bar. So we'll just say search wrapper like that. And inside of here, we're gonna have a label, which is going to be for our search element. And we're gonna give that a label of search. And we're just gonna say search users, even though this says search to do's over here, that was just from before. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have an input. This has a type of search because that's a specific type in HTML you can use. And we'll give it an ID of search so it links up to this for attribute right here. So that's our entire search section. And if we save and open this with live server, we can actually see this on the right hand side of our screen. As you can see, we now have that search users and this text box right here. Now, the next thing that we need to do is to actually work on the section for our cards. So let me just open up what we had. We're going to create a div called user cards, and this is where all of our user cards are going to go. And inside of here is where we're going to put each individual card. So a card is just going to have a class of card. Let me just put that in there. And then inside of here, we're going to have a header and we're going to have a body. So we're going to say header and body. And here we're going to have like email at gmail.com. And then for our header, we're just going to have something along the lines of my name. And now if we save and come over here, you can see we have my name and then the email. All we need to do is actually style this. So let's work on the CSS next. First, we can just link a style sheet. So we'll say link, and we wanna link a style sheet. We're gonna call it styles.css, and then we can create that over here. Now, if we go back over here, the very first thing that I wanna work on is going to be our search wrapper. So we can just say search wrapper, and we're gonna make this a display of flex. And we're also going to give it a flex direction of column. That's just going to make them stacked on top of each other. If we come over here, you can see it looks pretty much the same as it did before, but we can also add a gap of 0.25 REM, and that's just going to space out our label from our actual input box. Next, we can take our input and we can increase the font size to one REM. That way the font size in our input is the same as the rest of our page. I think that looks a lot better. And then we can work on our user cards. And for the user cards, we're going to be using CSS Grid. So if you're unfamiliar with that, I'm gonna link a video in the cards in the description for you to check that out. But essentially we just set the display here to grid, and then we need to define our columns. So our columns here is going to be a repeat and we want it to auto fill. And the reason we're doing this is so that as our screen size changes, you can see the amount of cards on each column actually changes. So this auto fill allows us to essentially set a minimum and a maximum size by doing min max. So by our minimum size, we're saying 150 pixels. Each card must be 150 pixels wide. And then we're going to be one FR as the maximum. So the minimum size is 150 and the max is just stretching to fill as much space as is available. So you can see here, we don't have enough space for two cards, so we only show one. But as we get bigger, now we have enough space to show 250 pixel cards and so on as we get bigger and bigger screens. So that's going to be for our user cards. And in order to see that working, let's just copy this single card that we have here a couple times. And now if we come over here, you can see that our cards are showing up. And as I expand my screen, you'll see they're now side by side and we have more and more cards next to each other. So this grid is working like we wanted to. Now the next step is just to finish off our grid. We're gonna add a gap between our cards of 0.25 REM. And we're gonna add a little bit of margin on the top of just one REM, just to space it out from that search bar. Now the next step is to style our actual cards, and these are gonna be super basic styling. If you wanna go into a more advanced card styling video, I'll link that in the cards and description for you because I have a full video covering CSS cards. So we're gonna do a one pixel solid black border. We're gonna set a background color to white, just so we can have that white background. And then we're gonna put a little bit of padding of 0.5 REM on all sides. There we go, super basic card. Then next, we're just gonna style out our header. So we're gonna get the header inside of the card, which we're gonna give a little bit of spacing on the bottom, 0.25 REM. And then finally, we're going to do the body. And all I wanna do in the body is just take our font size and I wanna make it a little bit smaller. We'll say 0.8 REM. There we go. Also, I'm gonna change the color of this to be a little bit lighter. So we'll say like 777. So it's a little bit more of a light color. And then finally, we're gonna add an additional class here called hide, which we're just gonna set the display to none. 
This hide class is what we're going to use to hide things. So as we search for something, you can see as our list gets smaller, we start to hide different cards. As you can see, all those other cards are hidden, and that hide class is allowing us to do that, while when there's no searching, we have all the cards visible. Now that right there covers all of the HTML and CSS. We can actually close out of this old version because as you can see, this looks exactly the same as the actual version we want. The next step is going to be our JavaScript. So let's create a simple script.js file and in our index.html, we're just gonna make sure that we link that script.js and we're gonna make sure we defer this at the top of our page. If you're not sure what this attribute does, I have a full video on it. I'll link in the cards and description for you. But one important thing that I wanna do is I wanna make it so that our user cards here are pulled in via an API. So if we come over to this JSON placeholder website, which I'll link down in the description below, this is essentially a API that you can use that has fake data. And if we scroll all the way down, you can see there's this user data and we can click on this. And this is essentially just some JSON data that we can use. So what we can do is we can copy this URL and then in our script JS, we can use this URL to make a request to this actual web page. And to do that, we're gonna be using the fetch API. So we can just say fetch we can paste in that URL that we have right here. And we wanna make a fetch request to this. And this fetch request is a promise. So we're gonna say dot then, it's going to give us a response. And we wanna convert that response to JSON. And then we wanna chain that as well to get our data. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how the fetch API actually works, I have a full video on it. I'll link in the cards and description for you. It's a pretty straightforward concept, but it allows us to get this data right here inside of our JavaScript in this data variable. So now the next thing I wanna do with this data is to display it on the page. And to do that, I'm going to be using a HTML template. So if we go into our index HTML, right now we have a bunch of cards in here. What I wanna do is I wanna take this card and convert it into a template. So I can create a template right here and just paste my card inside of here and I'm gonna leave all this information blank because this is all gonna be coming from our JavaScript. And then by default, our user card section right here is going to be empty and our JavaScript is going to populate it for us. Now, if you're unfamiliar with templates, I have a full blog article covering them, but essentially it allows you to create HTML that doesn't show up on the page, because as you can see, there's no HTML like this on the page anywhere, but we can use it inside of our JavaScript. So what I wanna do is I just wanna say here, data user card, so we can select this, or I'm sorry, user template. There we go, and then in our JavaScript, we can get that. So we can just say const user card template is equal to document.query selector. And I wanna query select for that data user template that we have. Make sure I spell that properly and make sure that const is also spelled properly. Now with this card, what we can do is we can just say, hey, we wanna actually get the card inside of it. So we can say card is equal to that template. We wanna get the content of the template. This is very important, we use the content property. And then we want to clone a node of that and pass in true. So what this is doing is saying, get the content inside our template, which is all of this information here. And by saying clone node with true, we're saying clone this content as well as all the content inside of it. So it gets everything inside of this card. Now this is going to return to us something called a document fragment. I can kind of show you what I'm talking about by just saying console.log card like that. And then if we just inspect our page here and I bring this over and we open up our console, you can see we get this document fragment being returned. Now, in order to actually use the content in this document fragment, we just need to get the very first child. So what we can do here is we can just say dot children, whoops, dot children of zero. This is going to get us the first child, which is that card. And now when I inspect and I look at my console, you can see we get the card being returned here. And the card has all the content inside of it. So we can actually add all the information we want to this card. So we want to do this inside of a loop. So let's just say data dot for each. And this is going to be for each user. There we go. And now if I just console log our user here instead of the card and I inspect, you can see we get a bunch of user information being printed out. You can see we have like an address, company, email, name, and so on. All we care about is this email and this name property. That's all we're going to be using in this example. So what I wanna do is I wanna get the header, set it to something, and I wanna get the body from our card. Now the easiest way for us to do that is go back into our index HTML and we're just gonna add some attributes here. We're gonna say data header, and we're gonna say data body. And then that way, in our script, we can just say, hey, card.query selector, and I want to get the data header, and I want to do the exact same thing for my body, like this. So now I'm getting both the body and the header section, and I can add the content into those different sections. So I can say, for example, our header.textContent is going to be equal to our user.name. And I can do the exact same thing for our body, but this one is going to be the email, just like that. So now I've actually populated that HTML. All I need to do is add it to this user card section. I'm just gonna use a data attribute for that called user cards container. And then in our script JS, what I can do is just copy this. We'll say user card container. And this is data user cards container, I believe is what I called it. Let me just make sure. 
yep, user cards container. So now I can take that container, I can append my card inside of it, just like that. So now you can see all of our children are showing up right here, which is exactly what we want. So now we have all of our cards. The next step is going to be actually dealing with our input here. When we type in something, we want to filter our list. So let's get our input real quick. We can just come up here and we can say data search. And then in our script, we can just say search input is equal to data search. And then finally, I can just come in here and I can add an event listener. So for our search input, I want to add an event listener on input. This is going to run any time that we change anything inside of here. So adding or deleting characters. Then I just want to run a function, and this function is going to take in an E value. And that's because we want to get the value from our input, which is just e.target.value. So this is going to be whatever we type in. And we can see that by just saying console.log value here. If I just inspect our page, open up the console real quick, and I start typing, you can see everything I type is being output right here. So every time we make a change, it's showing up inside our console, which means this function here is running. Now what I want to do in this function is I want to take all of our users and what I want to do is I want to loop through them and hide all the ones that don't match the input we typed in. So to do that, we need to easily be able to get all of our user information. And the easiest way to do that is going to be to actually have a user object. So we're going to say const actually let users equal a new array. We're just going to have an empty array to start with. And then inside of here, we're going to set our users equal to whatever we return from our data for each. And to return something, we're going to change this to a map. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this map syntax, I have an article and a video I'm going to link for you in the cards and description. But essentially, we can come down here and we can actually return an object. And this object is going to contain data about our user. So we want to get our name, which is just our user.name, our email, which is user.email. And we also want to have the element that is associated with this user, which in our case is our card. So now, if I come up here and I console log users, make sure this says users right here, and I save and I inspect our page, I just come over to our console and I just type something in, you can see we get an array of 10 things. They have a name property, an, an email property here, and an element property. And this element associated with the card for that thing. So the second one, you can see on the right hand side is highlighting the second card. First one is highlighting the first card and so on. So now I have the email, I have the name of the user, and I have the card for that user. So I can check, hey, does the thing we type in match the name of the email? Otherwise, just hide this card. So let's do that right now. We can create a simple variable called isVisible. And we want to do this inside of a loop for all of our users. So users dot for each user. What I want to do is I want to see, hey, is this user supposed to be visible? And this is just saying, hey, does my name match the input? Does it have the input inside of it? So we can say user dot name includes value, or we want to do the same thing for their email. So we can say user email dot includes value. And what this includes function does is says, hey, does this string for this name include this single letter anywhere inside of it? If so, return true. So if the name or the email includes that, our is visible is set to true. Then we can take our user element, we can take the class list, and we can call this nice function that is called toggle on this. And this toggle function allows us to pass a name of a class, which in our case is hide, and then a true or false variable that tells it if it's supposed to be on or off. And we can just say is not visible. So this little line of code here essentially says, if this user is visible, we're going to negate that and pass in false, which means that we do not want to hide the user, remove the hide class. Otherwise, if they're not visible, this is going to get negated to true, which means add the hide class in. So with this simple line of code, if I start typing in something, you're going to see everything disappears because nothing has SDF. If I type in just F, for example, only the users that have F in their name are going to show up. But you'll notice something interesting. You can see here we have this Leanne right here. And if I type in L, and I type in like EA, and you notice Leanne does not show up. The reason for that is it's case sensitive. If I use capital L, now she shows up. Generally, you don't want to have this case sensitivity. So to get around this, what you can do is you can convert everything to lowercase. So here we're just going to say to lowercase. That's going to convert our value to a lowercase value. We're going to do the same thing with our name. And we're going to do the same thing with our email. So now we're converting all the values to lowercase before we do any checks. And that way, it doesn't matter if it's got a capital letter or a lowercase letter, it's always going to work. So if I type in L-E-A-N, it works. If I type in all upper caps, it's going to work. So it doesn't matter what case you use. And this is really important and something most people forget about. And that's all it takes to create this search bar. If you want some more beginner-focused JavaScript tutorials, they're going to be linked over here. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.